I'll give you one of my recent examples of how my body was led to the statue of the Virgin Mary and also a message concerning what our Lord would like us to do to repent. The Garabandal apparitions of the Virgin Mother, St. Mary, to four young girls, seers, in 1961. They lasted for a couple of years. What were these messages? They were given to these young girls, most of them uh, 12 years old, one 11 years old. What were the messages and the warnings? Garabandal is in the northern coast of Spain, a small village in northern Spain in the Santander province near Picos de Europa Mountains. It's rugged and beautiful. Its full name is San Sebastian of Garabandal, located 600 meters above sea level, about 57 miles from the capital of the province. You have to get to climb uh, steep, poor roads to get there. Over 300 people live in Garabandal, so it's pretty small and quiet. There's no doctor in the town, no pastor in the church. But the pastor from Cosio, the next town down the road, used to celebrate Mass there on Sundays. In the evening of June 18, 1961, four girls were playing on the outskirts of the town. Conchita Gonzalez, who is married with four children living in the United States, Maria Dolores Mason Gonzalez, also known as Mary Lolly or Lolly, Jacinta Gonzalez and Maria Cruz Gonzalez, not related despite having the same surname as Conchita Gonzalez. Now, Maria Cruz was 11, the others were 12, all from poor families. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise like thunder and saw before them a bright figure of the Archangel Michael. On the following days, the Archangel appeared to them again in the same place. He announced that on July 2nd, they would see Our Lady. This was the beginning of the Garabandal events. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. July 2nd in the Christian Orthodox Church is one of the very special feasts for the Holy Mother, the Virgin Mary. And it's the date that uh, th her holy chastity belt was uh, submitted to the Church of La Herna. So it's one of her uh, f very special feasts. Many times we know that before a person's, uh, uh, let's put it this way, repentance or uh, conversion, their angel, their guardian angel appears to them, directing them, and then they see the Holy Mother. The Holy Mother then introduces them to Christ, and they have a vision of Christ. This is exactly what happened, for example, to St. Catherine of Sinai in the 3rd century AD. Now, going back to this, the story of how this happened, the Archangel appeared to them. He announced July 2nd they would see Our Lady, and this was the beginning of the Bar Garabadal events. The next night, around 6 p.m., the girls went into ecstasy or a trance while seeing the Virgin Mary, she appeared to them with two angels, both of which looked exactly like St. Michael over her right shoulder. It could have been very, very many times we see that Christian Orthodox saints see St. Michael, the Archangel, and also St. Gabriel, the Archangel. Let's remember it was St. Gabriel that first gave the Annunciation news to the Virgin Mary that she would be the Mother of God. And also the Archangel Gabriel was always... Um, supporting and protecting them. So the children saw a flaming red square with a triangle and an eye in it with some oriental writing. She spoke to them about everything from the village news to the beginning of the first warning and she also taught them how to pray the rosary and she appeared to them many times. 
Now, let's remember, even St. Paisius of uh, Mount Athos in Greece, of course, of the a recent Christian Orthodox saint, said that the chain that will tie up Satan is praying the rosary to the Virgin Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, that's Ave Maria, hail fair Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, Mount Women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus Christ, the Savior of our souls. Pray for our uh, Holy Virgin Mother of God. Pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. That is what we say for our rosary. And as St. Paisius explained, this is the chain that will tie up Satan. Now, the message of October 18, 1961, was the first warning. We must make many sacrifices, do much penance. We must visit the Blessed Sacraments frequently, but first we must be good. And unless we do this, a punishment will befall us. The cup is already filling, and unless we change, a very great punishment will come. Now, there are many Christians that say God is love and only love. That's not so. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. I have a church right across the street, and it's the eve before St. Peter and St. Paul's Feast, which is tomorrow, June 29, and uh, they are starting Vespers. Now, um, tomorrow, of course, is June 29th, when they will have Holy Communion. So when she says here, we must visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently, she means to be ready to partake and unite ourselves with the Holy Eucharist, which is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came to this world, to leave us with him. He is life and the resurrection. Now, while the Virgin was appearing to the girls, many physical hardships were witnessed by the people around them. The girls would drop to their knees on rocky terrain of the area without any damaging effects. They would fall on the ground in what was called ecstasy fall, leaving no marks or wounds to be seen, the doctors would test them by pricking them with pins to no effect. The doctors would shine lights in their eyes, but the girls would not even flinch. It's as if uh, they had no uh, sense of, of the physical world around them. Uh, the psychiatrists and doctors that studied them said there was no evidence of anything was wrong with them mentally or physically, but they could not explain why these girls were le at least mentally inept from these unexplained visions, let alone physically damaged from hitting the ground with such a force when they fell to their knees. Now, the miracle of the host. One of the great scientific events to occur was the miracle of the host. On May 2nd, 1962, the angel told Conchita that God would perform a miracle so that all people would believe. They would see the sacred host on her tongue at the moment of communion and that she should make this known 15 days in advance. July 18, 1962, the town was crowded with visitors, and at midnight, Conchita, who had remained in her home, continually surrounded by visitors, entered into ecstasy and went out into the street. At a short distance from her house, she fell down on her knees in the midst of the crowd. Lanterns were forced, focused on her. Conchita put out her tongue, upon which nothing was resting, as everyone could see. In a few minute, minute, moments, a white host appeared on her tongue and remained there for a few minutes. A businessman from Barcelona, Don Alejandro Damians, standing less than three feet from the girl, secured some very good moving pictures, and in the film there appeared 79 pictures of the extraordinary scene, the miracle of the host. And it seemed bright, even though it was dark, it was after midnight, as we know. Now, the message, message of June 19th, 1962, the Virgin told us that the whole world and it's, it is the world and it, it is this. The Virgin has said that to us that we are not expecting the chastisement because we are disregarding the first message by the way we live. But without expecting punishment, it will come because the world has not changed and now with this message, she has said it twice, and we do not heed her, because the world is worse and must change much, but has not changed at all. Message of June 23rd, 1962. The Virgin has told us the world continues the same, that it has not changed at all. They are so few who have amended their lives that it hurts very much, hurts her very much. She said, the chastisement is coming, seeing as the world is not changing. 
the cup is filling, she told us that we who are good should pray for those who are bad. The me that, that, that is to pray for their conversion. Okay? God and the Holy Spirit would convert them. Message of June 18, 1965, a second warning. As my message of October 18 has not been compiled, she said, with and has not been made known to the world, I'm advising you that this is the last one. Before the cup was filling up, now it is flowing over. My cardinals, my bishops and priests are on the road to perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Holy Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with sincere hearts, he will pardon you. You are now receiving the last warnings. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity. We will grant your requests. You should make more sacrifices. Think about the passions of Jesus. The message of June 23rd, 1962. The Virgin told us the world continues the same, has not changed at all. There are so few who have amended their lives that it hurts her very much. She said the chastisement has my coming, seeing as the world is not changed and the cup is filling. November 13, 1965. Kanchita saw the Blessed Virgin for the last time at Garambada and the warning. First, a worldwide warning that will appear in the sky like the collision of two stars that do not fall down. It will frighten all humanity regardless of where one happens to be at the time. It will be a thousand times worse than earthquakes, like a fire that will not burn our flesh. It will last a very short time, although to us it will seem to be a very long time. No one can prevent it from happening. It will be recognized as coming from God. It will resemble a punishment it's meant to be a purification, like the revelation of our sins and what we will feel in our hearts will be worse than sorrow. It will not kill us. If we die, it will be caused by in the emotion within us. The date was not revealed, only that it will happen before the announcement of the miracle. In other words, it's going to be a contrition of heart because God will allow us to see us as he sees us. He sees us. And uh, we will then see how um far and uh, what kind of an apostasy we've had from god now the miracle the visionary conchita said our lady has promised a greater miracle in garam Badal so that all may believe the apparitions and be obedient to the message quote as the punishment which we deserve for the sins of the world is great the miracle must also be a great one for the world needs it end quote it will occur on a thursday on the feast day of the saint devoted to the Holy Eucharist around 8.30 in the evening and will last for about a quarter of an hour. It will also coincide with a great event in the church. The sick who come to Garambandal on the day will be cured, unbelievers will be converted. There will remain a permanent sign at the Pines as a proof of Our Lady's tremendous love for all her children. The sign that will remain says Conchita will be able to be seen, photographed and televised but it will not be able to be touched. It will appear clearly that it is something not of this world, but of God. Conchita had been granted permission by Our Lady to announce the date of the miracle eight days in advance. With the present means of communication and travel, eight days are sufficient for people around the world to gather. The day of the miracle may be the last opportunity given to us by God, may also be Our Lady's last effort to save the world from the punishment already threatened. Some time ago, Conchita wrote, The Blessed Virgin will not allow me to reveal the nature of the miracle, although I already know it. Neither can I really reveal the date of it, which I know until eight days before it is to happen. Before the miracle takes place, Our Lady has said that all mankind will receive a warning from heaven. Uh, the relatively few messages of Garambandal contain prophecies of supernatural events that will affect the entire world. Also, the visionaries claimed they were given a series of frightening warnings about the future. Each of the girls stated that Mary told them about, that is the Virgin Mary, told them about a series of four extraordinary events which would reflect God's concern for the state to which humanity had fallen. These events were reported to be a worldwide warning to be experienced by everyone on earth. Its purpose would be to call humanity to amend its behavior, return to God. 
than a great miracle that will occur in the late winter or early spring within one year after the warning, permanent signs that will remain for a time in a pine grove near Garambantal and other selected locations of Marian apparitions. A terrible chastisement during which many will uh, be lost. Other prophecies indicate that this chastisement will eliminate up to two-thirds of humanity. The chastisement depends upon the response of humanity to the warning around the miracle. And uh, especially blessed, the only other person to see our Blessed Mother Garambaldal was a 38-year-old Spanish Jesuit priest, Father Louis Marie Andro, on August 8, 1961. Father Luis was among the pilgrims at the Pines. He was heard to say, miracle, miracle. He saw the Blessed Virgin and was shown the forthcoming great miracle. The children in ecstasy understood Our Lady to say to him, you will soon be with me. Although he had no history of serious illness, he died that same night of complete joy. His final words were, oh, what a sweet and lovely mother we have in heaven. How happy I am. What a favor the Blessed Virgin has bestowed on me. How, for, how fortunate we are to have a mother like her in heaven. There is no reason to fear the supernatural life. The girls have given us an example of how we must act with the Blessed Virgin. There is no doubt in my mind that the things involving the girls are true. Why should the Blessed Virgin have chosen us? This is the happiest day of my life. With those words, Father bowed his head and died. And Our Lady has said that on the day after the miracle, his body will be found to be incorrupt. That's a sign of sanctity of saints, the incorruptible body. Now, I want to tell you what happened to me. Uh, I'm not Catholic. I'm a Christian Orthodox. But uh, one Christmas many years ago, uh, it was like, you know, a couple of days before. I think it was the last shopping day before Christmas or something. You know, even though I was working, I was busy. I had a shopping list of what to get, you know, things to get. And <laughs> uh, I live in a country where we have... Christian icons, but we don't have any Christian statues. And I always loved the statue of the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus, and with one foot she was uh, treading the uh, serpent with her foot. And let me show you what happened, what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what I found. And this is, uh, you can see just here, we're just off baby Jesus, that's an icon of uh, a Christian Orthodox icon of the Virgin Mary holding baby Jesus and that's called the root of Jesse she has four prophets there on her sides and um, now this is what I found and it's amazing because I wanted something like this I said well there's no way I can get something like that unless I go to Rome or something and because uh, I live in Greece and we don't have statues like this and uh, this is what I found in an area uh, that uh, did not, it was not a religious store or a church store, it was just a gift shop. So there he is, she's, here. she's uh, uh, trampling the serpent as we can see. And this is what I wanted and I guess she, th she read my thoughts because I didn't tell this to I didn't tell this to anyone, it was just a thought that had passed my mind. So as I was busy getting my uh, gifts, before Christmas and I was going down my list I said to myself oh that's it I'm finished and I was saying oh, finally I got everything I wanted so then what happened was uh, my body was working by itself and I was saying to myself in my mind where am I going okay listen to what happened where am I going is what I said to myself and my body I couldn't control my body. My body, my legs were walking to the store next to the one I was standing in front with. Of it was uh, uh, athletic. Uh, I, I think I was getting children's sh uh, shorts and t-shirts and stuff. And I was walking to a store, you know, somewhere close by there, in this on the, in the shopping mall. And then my head, uh, I stopped in front of the window, and then my head was directed to a corner down, down, down to the right. And my eyes stopped at this statue. And then I just smiled. I said, now I know what happened to me. The Virgin Mary was directing my steps and my gaze to see her statue, which I always wanted. And I didn't know where to get it. I was saying to myself, oh, what a shame. 
you know, no use. I can't find it. Where is it going to be? But she got it for, she, she led me to it. Basically to sort of, you know, going down my Christmas shopping list. And then she led me after I finished everything. She led me to where this was. And I quickly went into the store. I said, how much is that statue? He said, 25 euros. It's sterling silver. I said, give it here. I want it. It's very, you know, sterling silver. This is all silver, sterling silver. 925 degrees silver. And, I, and that was it. So, yes, she can direct our, uh, that is, the Holy Spirit can direct our uh, body and our eyes. This again happens always when we open up the Holy Bible at random and our, the Holy Spirit directs us to the Word of God that will give us our answer to what we ask for or what we pray because He knows what's in our heart. And that's how we come to know theologically how close Jesus is to us and we are to Jesus by opening up the Holy Bible and our Holy Father say at least three times a day. It's a... It's a, it's a miracle every time this happens because we don't know how it's it's a mystical thing it's a, a it's a divine uh divine uh, grace that god uh, grants us and he comforts us by his word every time we open up the holy bible he gives us his his word uh, that he knows what's in our heart he knows what we're thinking he knows what we're about to do what we wish to do Anyway, I just wanted to share with you that this is exactly what happened to me in that the Holy Mother or the Holy Spirit guided me to find her statue. Later on, I found out that before Christian had, Christians had icons, uh, they had statues, but the statues were just too big and too expensive. You know, you had to have somebody, a sculptor, make a statue and they were too big, you couldn't carry them around. That's why people started having icons after that, okay? But um, I was lucky enough to have that experience and I wanted to share it with you. But I also want to read you a passage uh, that I read today out of True Life in God concerning Garabandal. And um, it, the message is of uh, September 1st, 1987. Fidelity is what I love. My child, I will give you a vision, lifting you to me. I will show you how heaven will appear. The sky was shown to me. It looked as any night with its stars. Then it changed. It resembled spots of paint like a painter's palette. But one color was dominating, surpassing all others. In command, it was red, thick, and it grew in its thickness like yeast pouring from above on us. And the Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ says, My child, I will open the heavens, letting you see what eye has never seen. You have well discerned. Keep awake. I will watch over you. Hear me. Right. I have since the beginning of times loved my creation, but I created my creation to love me too and recognize me as their God. I have since the beginning of time sanctified all that my hands created. I am a God of love. I am the spirit of sublime love creature. Since the beginning of times, I have shown my love to mankind, but I have also shown my justice too. Each time my creation rebelled against me and my law, I hardened at heart. My heart grieved by their iniquities. I came to remind them that I am the spirit of love and that they too are spirit. I came to remind them that they are but a passing shadow on earth made out of dust and that my first drops of rain upon them will wash them away, leaving nothing behind. I have breathed into them my breath, giving them life. The world has incessantly been offending me and I, for my part, have incessantly been reminding them of my existence and of how I love them. My chalice of justice is full, creation. My justice lies heavily upon you. Unite and return to me. Honor my creation. When you will, then I too will lift my justice. My cries resound and shake the entire heavens, leaving all my angels trembling for what has to come. 
I am a God of justice and my eyes have grown weary watching hypocrisy, atheism, immorality. My creation has become, in its decadence, a replica of what Sodom was. I will thunder you with my justice as I have thundered the Sodomites. Repent, creation, before I come. I have indeed forewarned you many a time, but you have not followed my instructions. I have raised up saints to warn you, but daughter, they have closed their hearts. My creation would rather live in lust and ignore me. I have given them signs to awaken them. My God, and she says here, my God, your children are only sleeping. Please come and wake them up. They are only sleeping. And our, our Lord Jesus Christ says they are sleeping hour after hour, year after year. And she says, but Lord, who is to blame if they have not been taught? They are almost innocent if they know nothing about you. And our Lord Jesus Christ says, I have raised servants and teachers on earth to teach them. But Lord, she says, your teachers and servants do work, but what can they do more when multitudes are negative, they are helpless. And he says, helpless, they should repent. They should come to me to repent. I have through times given them signs, but they have rejected them as not from me. I have given them warnings through weak and wretched souls, but they doubted my word. They have rejected all my blessings, grieving me. O oh, men with hearts out of rock, men of little faith, have they had more heart and have they had now even more heart, I would have helped them. I stirred them up from their sleep, but how many times have they closed their eyes, falling back into sleep? And she says, why don't they make it known to the world when you gave your signs? He says, some do, but the majority of my sacerdotal souls have closed their hearts, doubting, fearing, many of them fear. Do you remember the Pharisees? And she says, yes, Lord. And he says, let me tell you that many of them are replicas of the Pharisees, doubting, fearing, blinded by vanity, and with hypocrisy. Do you remember how many times I have given them signs? I have given them, given them signs hundreds of times, and what have they done? Times have not changed. Many of my sacerdotal souls are just the same replicas of the Pharisees. I have given, given them signs, but they want signs which could be explained by proofs. They want proofs. And all that I will give them is you, yourself. I have blessed you. My child, let, be, let me be everything. Remain nothing and let me be everything. The least you are, the more I am. I have now laid my justice on mankind upon them is what they have reaped. And she says, in their solution, I mean that somehow everything becomes like you want it, so your justice is lifted. And our Lord Jesus Christ says, when I will be received and not denied by my sacerdotal souls now, I will lift my justice. I have warned them, but they keep my warnings hidden. They seem to forget my omnipotency and my wealth. They tend to amass everything into one thing. That is solid proof. They will continue, they will believe only if they see greeting me, continuing not my blessings. Creature, creature, revive my church. Honor me and the hour is near, beloved. The hour is at hand. Love will come again as love. So that's what I wanted to read for you. And, um, of course, he says that Garel Bandal was real. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support.